Hi guys, happy Monday. I hope you've had a wonderful weekend and I hope that your Monday is going really well so far. Today I have a video for you on products I've recently used up or my empties. I filmed a video like this at the end of March and a lot of you seem to like that video on my channel so I thought I would go ahead and keep filming them for you. If you do enjoy these videos, please give this video a thumbs up or let me know in the comments below and I will make sure that I film another one probably toward the end of the summer. But I do have some makeup products, some skincare, and some hair care that I recently finished and I thought I would go ahead, give you guys a mini review, and let you know if I will be repurchasing the product or if I would recommend passing on it. I also wanted to let you guys know I will have an update video on the makeup that I'm trying to use up in 2017. We are almost at the six month mark, which is crazy, so I've made pretty good progress and I thought I would update you guys in a video, so that will be up at the end of June if you guys are interested in that video as well. Otherwise, let's jump into it and I'll show you everything that I've used up. I'll start with makeup products and then I'll move into skincare and hair care. So if you want to jump ahead, just check the description box below. So I did use up two eyeliners. The first one is from ColourPop and it is their eyeliner in the shade what is the name of this? Why do all of the ColourPop labels rub off so easily? Like even if I have a product that I rarely use, I'll pull it out of my drawer and the label will be completely gone. So I don't remember the name. I think it might be Dirty Talk, I wanna say, but I could be wrong. I'll link it in the description box below. I love this eyeliner so much. I've already repurchased a backup of it. So it's sitting in my makeup collection ready to be used because it is one of my favorite makeup products of all time. I love wearing this shade all over the waterline. It glides on beautifully, but it gives your eyes a really beautiful kind of like extra touch. It helps to brighten up the eyes because it is a lighter gold, but the metallic sheen looks so beautiful. I wear it all the time. They also have a gorgeous copper or a metallic brown, so I would recommend them. I will definitely continue to repurchase them. They're really affordable and they're some of my favorite eyeliners. The other liner that I used up is from Kat Von D. It is the Tattoo Liner in the shade Trooper. I just had like a deluxe size sample, but I actually went out and purchased the full size after I used this up, so I would recommend purchasing it. I will definitely continue to repurchase is it it lasts a pretty long time I feel like this deluxe size sample lasted me for a while and then the one that I currently have has lasted me for a while as well I love this eyeliner I think it's a great option I still love my physician's formula eyeliner but this one has kind of taken its place lately just because it is so dark and it goes on so easily so physician's formula is a great alternative if you don't want to spend the money on the Kat Von D liner but I have to say it's a great option from Sephora I like it so much better than the Stila liner which used to be my favorite it, but Kat Von D has replaced it, so I love this one. I also used up the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer. This one is a little bit bigger than like a deluxe size sample. I think this size is available on Hourglass's website. I don't know if this size is available at Sephora, but if it is, I would recommend grabbing it because a little bit goes a super long way. It will last you such a long time, and if you don't know that you want to commit to the full size, this is going to be a great option for you. This primer is amazing. It is currently my number one favorite primer. I just think a little bit goes a very very long way and I like to wear a lot of like heavy full coverage foundations so I pair it with this primer which is super lightweight and it just helps the foundation to go on really beautifully and stay in place all day long and you actually use less foundation when you use this primer for some reason it just kind of creates this really nice smooth base between your skin and your makeup so you don't need as much foundation and I love it I absolutely recommend this and I will continue to repurchase it I feel like I have a lot of deluxe size samples or samples in here but I have been trying to use up the products that I'm getting in subscription boxes instead of just like getting them and then hoarding them away in a drawer which is what I normally do so I feel like it's probably good that I'm using them up this one I got in an ipsy bag or a play by Sephora box but it's from Too Faced and it is their mascara melt off so it is a cleansing oil waterproof mascara dissolver again I just have like a small sample size but the prices that I put on the screen are for the full size products just so you guys have an idea of how much it would cost I don't think I'll repurchase this not because it's not a good product. It is a good product and I feel like if you wear a lot of waterproof mascara or even if you wear it on occasion and you have trouble removing it, it might be a great option. It's essentially a cleansing oil with a mascara wand so you can apply it really easily to your lashes and even at the root of your lashes if you wear false lashes and you struggle with getting all of the lash glue off your eyes, this is going to be helpful. But for me, I don't really wear a lot of waterproof mascaras. I'll sometimes wear them during the summertime and I haven't really been wearing false lashes at all so so I haven't really struggled with removing my eye makeup. It usually comes off pretty easily with my facial cleanser. So I don't think I'll end up repurchasing it just because it's kind of like a like luxury item. It's not a luxury brand, but it's like one of those products you don't need in your makeup collection, but it makes things a little bit easier. So for me, it's not really like at the top of my priority list, but if that's something you need, you might really like it. I do think it's a good product. I just don't know that I need it. 
I've actually been looking for a really good daily sunscreen and I actually like to wear this one better on its own than I do under makeup. When I brought it to the beach I didn't wear makeup the entire week and I loved how this made my skin look because it kind of has like skin smoothing properties to it. So when you apply it it's very smoothing. It looks really gorgeous on the face which isn't usually what I'm looking for in an SPF. It's just a bonus in my opinion but it doesn't feel greasy or heavy or oily but it also doesn't feel like it doesn't dry down to nothing. I tend to be like a full coverage makeup fan and I feel like it's a little bit too slick to wear under a full coverage foundation. It kind of makes my foundation break down a little bit more quickly than it would if I use something else. So I would recommend it for days when you're not wearing makeup or when you're wearing light makeup. If you are like a light makeup user, it's going to be a great option for you. And I don't wear makeup every day, especially during the summertime. I'll go outside all the time without makeup on. So I think this is going to be ideal for me for those days. But on days when I wear like a full coverage foundation, I wouldn't reach for this just because I feel like it makes my foundation break down a little bit more quickly. I also used up the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer and I wear the shade Light Vanilla 2. I really like this product. I actually already repurchased it because it is kind of like my go-to concealer. It's just a good, reliable concealer. It does a great job at brightening up my under eye, um, hiding dark circles. It doesn't crease and I struggle with creasing like crazy and it's just kind of like my favorite go-to concealer. I did just do a video on like high-end concealers. If you guys want to check it out, I'll link in the description box below. I reviewed and compared five different high and concealers so this was one of them and it's just kind of like a good everyday reliable concealer so I love it I will definitely continue to repurchase it okay so moving on to skincare the first product that I used up is from pure lease it is their blue lotus four-in-one cleansing milk I love this product it has definitely become one of my favorite skincare products it is currently an essential in my nighttime skincare routine it works so well to remove all of your makeup I like to just wet my face and apply a little bit of this all over my face and you just gently rub it in and all of your makeup melts away. It works like a cleansing oil but it's a little bit more lightweight and I like it so much better because I do have oily skin and I feel like cleansing oils can come in handy but sometimes they're just a little bit too hydrating for my skin. This one is the perfect makeup remover but this product does work as a cleanser as well as a makeup remover. It's very gentle so it does not irritate my skin or my eyes. I actually use it to remove my eye makeup as well. It doesn't leave my skin feeling stripped or dry. It is just like the most amazing skincare product and I love it so much. I will definitely repurchase it because I have to have it. I already added it to my Amazon cart. The Pure Lease Cleanser actually kind of replaced this next product that I used up. So I used up the Garnier Skin Active Micellar Cleansing Water and I haven't repurchased it because Garnier is not cruelty free, at least from what I briefly read. And so I was kind of trying this out in this place. Even though they're not like the same product, I use them for the same purpose to remove makeup. And I liked the Pure Lease product so much more. I just felt like it did a really great job. So I just didn't end up repurchasing this, but I did really like this product at the time. I repurchased this so many times. I think it did a great job at removing all of my makeup and it's available at the drugstore, which is really convenient. I also used up the Julep Love Your Bare Face Hydrating Cleansing Oil. I love this product. I think it is a great option, especially if you have dry skin. I have oily skin and I do like cleansing oils, but I feel like they're more so ideal for people with dry skin because they are super hydrating. I think if you have oily skin, Skin, the Pure Lease product is going to be ideal for you because it's a little bit more lightweight, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, if you have dry skin you, or oily skin, you could use this product as well. I do use it, but I usually reach for it more so during the winter time or the colder months when I struggle with a little bit of dryness on my skin because it does a great job at hydrating your face, but also removing all of your makeup. I also love this for eye makeup because it is so gentle. You don't have to tug at all. You can just remove your eye makeup so easily with this cleansing oil. So I would repurchase it. I'll probably end up repurchasing it during the winter time because I always do every year but for now I'm not going to repurchase it and it is pretty expensive that's the only thing I go through it so quickly because I feel like you need a good amount of the product and it's kind of pricey so I won't repurchase it for now but I'll probably go back to it in the winter time I only have one sheet mask because I haven't really been using a lot of sheet masks lately I don't know why I've really been using like a lot of exfoliating cleansers and like exfoliating masks and things like that more so than sheet masks, but I do love sheet masks, so I have to get back into them. This one is the hashtag I woke up like this mask from BioBell. BioBell is my favorite sheet mask brand, and this one is a great option if you have a breakout or if your skin is looking a little bit dull because it's really going to revitalize your skin. The material is very thin and it's not uncomfortable, it's not irritating. They have a few different ones to choose from and they're affordable, so I will definitely continue to use them. Oh, and they're cruelty free. They did write me back and let me 
you know their masks are cruelty free which is awesome so I definitely recommend them. I did use up two of the e.l.f. makeup remover cleansing cloths. These are a great option for removing makeup from your face but also for removing swatches. They're very wet so I feel like you can get all of your makeup off your face without having to go in multiple times with multiple wipes. So I like these and they're very affordable. And then I did try out their makeup remover fragrance free cleansing cloths. So these are somewhat new to their website. I do really like these. They're pretty much the same as their regular cleansing cloths but they are fragrance free. So if you are sensitive to the scent in the original ones definitely try these. Okay let's finish up with hair products. So I've tried a new shampoo this month and it is from Briogeo. It is their Rosarco Repair Shampoo. So I wanted to find a good sulfate free shampoo and in the past when I had heard of sulfate free shampoos I always just assumed they would be drying, they wouldn't lather, they'd be hard to work with but I did not have that experience at all with this one. I felt like it did give me a nice lather which I mean I don't know how important that is but when a shampoo doesn't lather really well I feel like my hair just gets more tangled and I have naturally tangly hair so that's definitely a plus for me but I feel like it hydrated my hair without weighing it down which I wasn't super surprised because I do really like the Rosarco line. All of the products that I've tried from that line are really nice. They're made with rosehip oil, argan oil, and coconut oil I believe so they are very hydrating, very moisturizing but at the same time they haven't weighed my hair down in the past. The only thing is that I went through it pretty quickly. You do get eight ounces but it's a little bit more expensive than a drugstore product and I'm used to getting a size like this at the drugstore for a fraction of the price so I do want to repurchase it but I, I wash my hair a lot. I'm not one of those people that can go like a few days without washing your hair so I go through a lot of shampoos so when I spend more money on a hair care product it hurts a little bit more because I use it so often and I do have like a good amount of hair so I have to use a good amount of shampoo. That being said I do feel like the sulfate free products that I've been using lately have helped the quality of my hair so I think I will end up repurchasing this. I think it's a good product and I love Riogeo products. Right now I'm using like three other shampoos and three other conditioners so it might be a little while but I think I will come back to it and repurchase it because it is a good quality product. I also used up this Garnier Fructis Fortifying Shampoo. It is their Sleek and Shine Shampoo and I love this product so much. I've used it for years but I have been looking for a replacement. It makes my hair so shiny and so beautiful and I'm sure it's like the silicones and the sulfates that are making it so manageable but I love how it makes my hair look and feel that I have used it for years and years. I have a giant size currently in my shower that I'm working on just because it does such a great job. I have very frizzy dry hair and this one just makes it feel really smooth and nice. So I do like it. I would definitely repurchase it but Garnier Fructis is not um, cruelty free so I won't be repurchasing it unless they go cruelty free which I have no idea if they plan to do that but this is a great option from the drugstore that I've really enjoyed for years. I did use up two of the Aussie three minute miracle moist deep conditioners. I love this product. I've gone through so many of them. I think I had some of these in my last empties video. I don't believe Aussie is cruelty free so these will probably be the last ones that I purchase. I do have one in my shower as well but once I use those up I'll have to find something different which is disappointing. I have been looking for like higher quality hair products so I don't know that I would have repurchased them but they've just kind of been like my go-to conditioner for years. These make my hair feel really nice. I feel like they are very conditioning. They're very hydrating and my hair gets really dry especially on the ends but when I use this product it just looks and feels so much better so I have really enjoyed these. I go through them very quickly. That's the only downside because they are eight ounces again and I feel like eight ounces of a hair product is not that much, at least like a shampoo and conditioner. But right now I'm working on it, different conditioners from Chlorine, Briogeo, and I think I still have two of these in my shower, one or two of them. So I'm working on those for now but these are the two that I most recently used up. Speaking of Chlorine, I did finish up two of their dry shampoos. I'm almost finished with a third one but I only finished up two recently. So this one is the dry shampoo with oat milk which is the gentle formula. It's meant for all hair types and then I also have the dry shampoo with oat milk Oh, again, this one's the gentle formula, but it's for brown to dark hair. I didn't find a huge difference between the two. I felt like the brown to dark hair one didn't really give off like a deeper cast. I felt like it kind of looked similar on my hair. Not like the Batiste Dry Shampoo, which I'll talk about in a second. That one does a great job if you have dark hair, but this one kind of had like the same color. So I don't think it really matters which one you buy. There is a third one that I'm using right now that's a little bit different, but I like this dry shampoo formula because it does not irritate my scalp at 
at all. I have a really sensitive scalp and like certain products can really irritate it, especially dry shampoos. But this one is so gentle. I discovered it a while ago, like years ago from Birchbox and I fell in love with it because I think it does a great job at just kind of like refreshing your hair without irritating. If you have an extremely oily scalp, I don't know that this is the best formula because it's not going to soak up like a ton of oil. But if you spray it in your hair before bed, the next day your hair looks really good and then you can spray a little bit more. So again, I went through this pretty quickly. It's 3.2 ounces. The Batiste one is like double the size and it's a lot less expensive. But if you have a sensitive scalp, definitely try this one out. I also finished up the Batiste Dry Shampoo Plus, and this one is with a hint of color for dark hair. This is my favorite dry shampoo of all time, especially like if I'm going out somewhere. If I'm just like around my house and I spray dry shampoo, I couldn't care less if it has a hint of color because, you know, what does it matter? But if you're going out and you want your hair to look really good and you have dark hair, this is going to be a great option because it sprays out dark. I think in my last video, I mentioned they aren't cruelty free, and a lot of you guys told me they actually Actually are and right on the bottle they say not tested on animals and it is a vegan product which is awesome so I was really happy to hear that because I love these dry shampoos they're my favorite I think they're just a great option and they work really well to soak up any of that excess oil and really just refresh your hair okay guys that's all I have for you today thank you so much for watching if you have recently used up any products make sure you let me know in the comments below what you guys thought about them or if you have a review or if you have any recommendations for me I love hearing from you guys otherwise I will see you in my next video Bye.